Hi, my name is Prerac, if you don't know already. Um, I make a lot of videos about medicine, and if you aren't subscribed to this channel, you should be subscribed. But anyway, uh, most recently I've been making a bunch of Anki videos because I think it's back to school, and Anki is one of the best tools a med student can have. And so last time, on my last video, which I'll link right up here, um, I kind of showed you how, how I make Anki cards. But in that video, I discussed the Frozen Fields add-on and a lot of you want to know how to use it effectively, and so that's what I'm gonna be discussing in this video. Let's do it. All right, so go to the link. It's obviously gonna be linked right below in the description. It's gonna take you here. This add-on will work for 2.0 or 2.1. I have 2.0. It's also by this homie named Glutaminate, who I love like glutaminate. I love you so much. I hope you know that. Uh, he makes a lot of great Anki add-ons. Uh, so now go down and uh, just go ahead and copy this. Go into Anki, go to tools, go to add-ons, go to browse and install, paste this code, press OK, and it'll say restart Anki. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now when you go back what you should do to make sure it's downloaded is just see here, you'll see frozen fields, so it shows that you do indeed have the add-on. Now when you click add, you'll see these three snowflakes next to your cards. Um, I'm gonna now add cards and show you how to use those snowflakes effectively because I think there is a really good way to do it. Uh, specifically, I'm gonna add cards to my Master Sketchy Deck. So now this is my Master Sketchy Deck. I'm just gonna go ahead and click Add. Now you'll see that uh, you'll have these snowflakes in action. Uh, when I'm adding cards, I always have my cards on one side and my source of information on the other. Today we're gonna be talking about heart sounds. Before I even start with heart sounds, I want you to know the way I use this add-on is that I almost always freeze this extra column because in that extra column, I include all of the prerequisite information that I need to understand the topic at hand. Specifically today, we're gonna be talking about S3 and S4, so it might be good for me to know about S1 and S2. So I know that S1 represents the sound of the mitral and tricuspids, I, I don't even care about spelling, tricuspid valves closing, um, and S2 um, is the sound of the aortic and pulmonic valves closing. And this is just background information. Between S1 and S2 is systole, and between S2 and S1 is diastole. Another thing that might be important for me to know, considering that this is a, a topic about S3 and S4, is seeing all of those in an image. So I've already went ahead and looked up S1, S2, S3, S4, and there's this nice image that illustrates where each of those come from. So I want to include that here. And you'll see again, between S1 and S2 is systole, and between S2 and S1 is diastole in this image. So this really helps me contextualize everything. And you'll also see that S4 happens right before S1, and S3 happens right after S2. Okay, now that we have this fundamental knowledge down, you'll see that it actually becomes relatively easy to understand topics that I'm going to include at the top, and if I ever get confused, information is right here. So you'll see that I say S4 happens right before S1. S1 is the closing of the mitral slash tricuspid valve, so S4 represents blood pumping into a stiff ventricle. And this kind of makes sense, right? Because the way the heart works is um, atria open and atria let blood flow into the ventricle, and at the very end, the atria actually pump the last of that blood into the ventricles. And so that's actually what you're having right before... Um, uh, the, the mitral and tricuspid valves close, which is S1. And so in this case, S4 happens if you're pumping into stiff ventricles, because if the ventricles are stiff and you pump into them, of course you'll get a sound, and specifically you'll get an S4. So what is the meaning of an S4 sound? And you'll see here, it's just heart pumping blood into, um, or no, not so much heart, it's the atria pumping blood into stiff ventricles. And by stiff, I mean non-compliant. Because non-compliant means that the ventricles, when they get this blood, they don't actually expand, they actually stay stiff. And they the blood hits it and you actually get a noise. And that's what S4 is. And that's not usually, um, if it's pathologic, that's not usually normal. Um, so TLDR, S4 is when atria contract and blood hits a non-compliant ventricle. Um, another thing I might even include here is S4 Wikipedia. And Wikipedia always has some great images that I like to take from them because they're <laughs> Audi S4, no heart, buddy. 
I'm not trying to dream about cars right now. I'm all about the heart. So this is a really nice image that I like to include. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna just go ahead and copy it and also include that here. And I'm gonna go ahead and also tag this appropriately. I always like to track things. It's gonna be in personal, clinical, hashtag medicine. And then I'm gonna put it under cardio and specifically under cardio, I'll put it under heart sound. So you'll see I always tag cards. And now, because I left that snowflake on, it saves everything beforehand. So now I have all of this pertinent information right at my fingertips as I go on to make more cards. So now I said, recall compliance is delta V over delta P. That's actually important for me to know. So I went ahead and made this card, you know, as four happens when atria contract blood into a non-compliant ventricle, what does compliance mean in this context? Compliance in any physiology in medicine re refers to delta V over delta P. If something is very compliant, that means for a very small amount of pressure, the volume expands a large amount. But in this case, the heart is not that compliant, which means for a, even a really large amount of pressure, the, the, the volume of the heart won't expand all that much. And so what you end up getting is something hitting the heart, the volume doesn't expand that much, so that actually ends up creating a lot more friction slash flow, and that's what you hear with S4. Um, and you'll see here, it's also known as an atrial gallop because it's caused by the atria contracting into a stiff ventricle. So, um, so one time, so oftentimes I'll also be like S4 is known as an atrial gallop. Why is this? And this is I often do this to test my own understanding of something. And I'll go ahead and include right here because it is caused by the atria contracting um, into a stiff ventricle. And I'll highlight atria because that's probably why it's called an atrial gallop. Probably the atria contract and it hits the ventricles. And even if that's not true, at least for me, it's a good way for me to remember S4 is called an atrial gallop because it's linked with the atria. Okay, um, now let's go ahead into S3. S3 is, some is something that happens early in diastole. Oh, I guess there's a small thing here. Unlike S3, it is usually not normal. Eh. So the crazy part about S3 and S4 is in the clinic, I've just heard everyone say S3 can be normal, S4 can be normal, S3 sometimes can be pathologic, and S4 can also sometimes be pathologic. I'm not going to kind of put that here because it's not black and white like that. It'll depend on context. But what is important for me to know is what causes an S4, and it's also going to be important for me to know what causes an S3. I don't care as much about whether or not it's pathologic because that's going to depend entirely on context. For example, if I have a patient who's clearly in heart failure and has, a, you know, one an S3 or S4, well, then they're probably pathologic. But if you if you have someone like me who actually runs a lot and and maybe is athletic, and I have an S3 or S4, then maybe it's not pathologic, and it's more and it's more physiologic, right? But in both cases, it probably is still caused by some underlying foundational physiologic principles, which we're talking about. Okay. Anyway, let's move on. Um, and in this case, I, I include S4, and you'll see it's still saving my images here. Um, all right, so now let's see, S3 is something that happens early in diastole. That's right, S3 happens right after S2, and between S1 and S2 is systole. Remember? Look at this. That's why you have the image here. So if I ever forgot, it's right here. Anyway, um, early in diastole is caused by blood passively flowing into the ventricles, but there's a lot of blood and that causes the sound. Increased blood causes the tension of reversion. Okay, so S3 is basically caused by the fact that um, S2 has just happened, which means the ventricles have just contracted and you have let all the blood out and the aortic and pulmonic valves have just closed. What's going to now happen is the uh, mitral and tricuspid valves will open, but because there's just so much blood in the atria, all that blood is going to rush in and hit the ventricles really fast, and that's what initially causes the S3. So what causes the S3 heart sound? Caused by the fact that a lot of blood comes in right away as the mitral and tricuspid valve open. And just in this case, because we're talking about S3 now, it's going to be important for me to remember that S4, in contrast, was caused by atria contracting and hitting non-compliant ventricles. And this is just important for me to remember because now I'm talking about S3 and maybe now I'll want to be like, okay, well, if this is S3, what's S4? So this is me just thinking ahead and including it here. Um, all right, so that's that's kind of what I wrote here. Let's do valves open. Um, a common cause can be congestive heart failure because what happens in congestive heart failure where your heart's not working that well, so what ends up happening is blood builds up and blood builds up in basically backwards, right? And so it'll build up in the atria, and when the atria are open, there's so much blood in the atria that all of that blood 
rushes into the ventricles. The ventricles aren't used to getting that much amount of blood, but it enters and you get an S3. And in a healthy person, the S3 can also be normal. Um, but you'll see here, I did write that S3 is found in heart failure. So you'll say S3 can often be heard in patients with heart failure. Why is this? Um, heart failure with decreased ejection fraction. And I'm going to just mention this because what this means is blood starts to back up. Because if the heart is failing, the ventricles aren't pumping out enough blood, so more and more blood sticks around the ventricle with ventricles, which means more and more blood sticks around in the atria, which means more and more blood will be in the atria, which means when the mitral and tricuspid valves open, it'll go into the ventricles and make the S3. Um, leads to atria having a lot of blood. So when mitral slash tricuspid open, Lots of blood will flow in and hit the ventricles. Okay, and there you have it. I just made a few cards. These are very conceptual cards. You'll see I didn't make that many. It only took about 10 to 15 minutes. But you'll see I also used this freeze add-on to make very powerful cards because now if I ever need to relearn this again, I have included enough notes that I really can relearn it. And I, as I said, I made these cards. So in in like my mind, I'm really gonna remember this well as opposed to cards that maybe I use from pre-made decks, which I do do, and I modified. When I make them by like, my, like this by myself, they really do help me stick. So this is how I use the freeze add-on. This is how I make personal cards. And this is specifically how I um, optimize making those cards in a really efficient and time efficient way. All right, if you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.